Okay, let's check out the Drama S73 plugin from SoftTube. First, I just want to say I'm not a fan of these magic button sort of plugins, but I've owned Drama Gear and also I love SoftTube plugins. I think they're probably some of the best out there. So I thought it couldn't hurt to try the demo, and I was right. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to show you though is is I've done some tests on all the settings basically using the same here I'll play this I just ran kind of 100 Hertz 500 Hertz 1k 2.5k 5k and 10k blips through just to see what's actually going on and these are the, the controls you can see they're all level and the different settings on the drama well, let's get that back we have clarity 1 clarity 2 neutral and so on First thing you're going to notice is obviously on the Clarity 1, which is this one here, you can see that the bass is being affected more than the high end. And as it, that's, this is, by the way, this is off. <laughs> so this, this is when you've got your amount down to off. It is actually still affecting the sounds. And that's actually, that holds true for all of the, uh, the various um, pieces. Not to be confused with dry. Um, these are all set at 50, at 100% um, wet when I did these, not not this setting here. They're all set to off, and you can see that the different presets actually do affect. Look at um, this gentle compression here. There's quite a boost in the bass, and even more severe in. Um, well, this is when I activate it. So. What you then see is this middle row is when they're around 50%. In, the, in this case, you'll see the numbers I've written, I've got down here are different. The reason being is I set them all using tones to minus four dB of gain reduction, just so there was a similar amount of effect going on on all of these. Um, it's quite startling what you can see going on here in this, uh, the gentle compression, the bass, you can see how it's boom. It's a slow attack compression and when it's up to 100 percent it's quite serious so this got me thinking well first of all it confirmed that it's mainly compression that's doing all the magic in this which you know is a good thing especially when you're mastering um, because you, you're less likely to bring up the harshness if you use it you know in little amounts so the setting i've got on here right now you can see i'm actually using one of them at 39 percent and half mix that's kind of normal when you start using the plugin and what I'll do now is actually just show you what I mean on on this EDM track so let's go to that okay so let's activate basically I'll just play a little bit first with no effects in it the mix is pretty good but it needs that you know little bit of massaging all around just subtly done so my normal path is to use a decent mastering EQ like this Alicia one which I absolutely think is the business <laughs> it's got MS mode in so I'm, I've got separate EQs set up on the middle and side um, and the warm button is switched in which is their kind of take on giving it that little bit of extra analog tone and the other plugin I have on is the, um, also from uh, Plugin Alliance, is the Vertigo VSC2, which is a SSL style compressor, uh, like bus compressor. And again, this is probably one of the best ones I've ever used. So these two plugins are on pretty much everything I do. And because of that, I thought I'll just do what I would do normally and get a good sound and see what effect I could get going against it with the drummer. Now I'm going to activate the drummer side and what you can see going on here is I've actually got three stacked. And the reason being is after I looked at um, what each effect was doing to the signal across the frequency ranges. Um, I thought, you know what, these actually might work well together in sequence, and I was not wrong. Oh, I just noticed that I've got air on two of them. I, th I think I meant not to do that. The first one I've got 
these are in sequence here. So first I added a bit of clarity, 50% and down in the mix um, to, well, starting at the values here go from 0 to 10. Um, so let's call that 7. But it's actually less effect. So it's sort of a weird numbering, but hey, what can you do? Um, the middle one I have got on ambience, which adds a little bit of stereo width and depth to the uh, mix. These are set at 50 and it's half mixed in. Um, I put a bit of gain uh, increase on this one as well. It just helped kind of push the, you know, the compression, I guess, that happened from the first one. And then the third one, which is punch, and, you know, you would think that the more you put in, the more punch you're going to get. Well, it's actually sort of almost the opposite. Um, and you'll see in a second when I run it, but basically as you, as you dial this effect in, um, you do get more bass, but you get less punch. So, um, here, let's just back it up and I'm going to mute all three of them for the moment. So this will be the track running and then you'll watch me put each one in and you'll hear a difference of a, a slight difference of what's going on. And then we'll be it against my, um, my EQ and, and compress mix, the, my normal chain of effects, as it were. Okay, so let's just close these for the moment so we can see what's going on. If I go back to here, <clears throat> I'm going to start with the the EQ side. I'm going to start with this channel, and then I'm going to solo it to the drummer stack. Um, so let's start with this. Now, of course, there's a little bit of gain increase, but it is not actually overall gain. It's the elements within the sounds. Like, for instance, the lead sound is, is a similar sort of level, but the bass obviously gets a little stronger in the drummer stack. Um, but there's also more going on. Just have a listen in particular to uh, the thumping, the, the kind of off time bass because that really sort of pops out. Actually it doesn't jump out as much as it seems to have a little more space in the mix. It's not as up front. The, the mix definitely falls back a little bit like it's not all in your face. It feels a bit, well obviously it feels a bit wider but it also um, just seems to have more depth because the clarity is in seems to be, appears to be, um, sharpening up all of the individual sounds just a little bit in a way that th it's like there's less um, mud going on. So let's just run that again. I noticed right away the reverb sounds a lot more spacious like wider you know and it's all absolutely the same settings otherwise let's try another part of the track just to illustrate again sort of the differences so these are all all the um i'm not changing anything after having done this i'm not showing you what the parameters do i'm just giving you an idea of the difference of the effect of just stacking a few of these things Okay, so here's earlier in the track.
Okay, so that kind of wraps up what I wanted to demonstrate. Um, I have to say I was, well, actually, when you listen to this loud, I mean, like, really kind of club loud, it's even more apparent what's going on. The, this, the track just sounds that much bigger. And, you know, I haven't done anything but add three of these plugins in a row just to enhance what was going on there. I haven't had to mess around trying to focus on my EQs or anything. It sort of is done the job for me. And like I started by saying, I, I, I'm not a fan of these sort of preset devices or one one touch things, but they've obviously done their homework. The It sounds great. I've, I've managed to resurrect some old mixes, just it, give them new life. It, it is that good. And at the moment, you know, you can't go wrong. The price is also very good. So uh, anyway, I hope you uh, got something out of this. And uh, if you want to check out this whole track, there'll be a link at some point in the video. Cheers. Thanks.